you know Jeremy Piven, he's famous for playing the role of Ari Gold on the legendary, monumental Entourage TV series. I'm not sure about you guys, but I know for me, when I used to watch Entourage, I used to fucking get so jealous, right? Jealous that I didn't have that kind of group of friends around me. Jealous that I wasn't at that stage where I was chasing my dreams. Jealous that I wasn't living in LA. Just so jealous. No, no show gave me more FOMO or gave me more or gave, or made me more envious than um, I'd say. Uh, then I'd say um, Entourage because I think some people have the same feeling when it comes to how to make it in America, how to make it in America, right? But I never really watched that, even though it was a show that I probably should have watched, considering my streetwear background and considering the fact that I was kind of thinking about doing my own brand. I probably should have um, watched that show, but I never got around to watching it. And I guess some people have the same sort of thing when it comes to um, Sex in the City, right? Um, some girls probably feel the same sort of thing. It comes, it comes at you in a monument. It comes at you. Sometimes you stumble upon a show at a time in your life where you're trying to figure stuff out, right? You're growing into a young adult or you're becoming a teenager and you and this show stumbles up upon your lap and it just represents everything that you want to be when you're older. Because especially when you're younger, you don't really have a good perspective of what old age looks like or being older looks like. You think your older brother that's 25, your teacher that's 29 is a granddad, right? You don't have any perspective. You don't, you, you've never seen a cool version of of somebody that's older maybe if it's a celebrity but for celebrities you don't really you don't really class celebrities in age until they get like over 60 they, they're just like these weird you know other 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 worldly beings to us for the most part so the first kind of interaction you have usually with a, a cooler older person is usually via a film right where they depict where they're playing a character maybe they're playing like a high school character or they're playing like a young man or they're playing a young woman or for a tv series where you're seeing them continually grow in front of your eyes so I'd imagine the same thing would be like um um Friday Night Lights, right? That football one, Friday Night Lights. Yeah? That would be one that was qu quite monumental in terms of shaping me as a person, influencing kind of what I wanted to do. And there was a few others, but I think Entourage really is one that really piqued my interest. Like, wow, man, they really kind of, again, made me realize just how little of a social group I have. Anyway, Ari Gold was probably one of the standout characters on there, actors in general. Uh, characters of course but an actor as well he really smashed it he did a really good job of encapsulating that sleazy um um machismo uh self-centered conniving hollywood agent that everyone kind of knows of or heard about character type and somehow through his kind of you know real acting chops he's able to kind of embody it all in one person and absolutely smash it and he did a good job of it but unfortunately when the whole um me too movement was kind of you know really hitting this precipice and i think harvey weinstein had just kind of i think the first couple of real interviews no i think that's when that article came out in the new york times or whatever is it new york times or whatever the kid i've got what his name is the guy that read it. he's the son of who's the son of anyway whenever that first article came out for me to um or the first couple of proper eyewitness detailed accounts came out about harvey weinstein or harvey weinstein unfortunately um jerry Piven was kind of lumped in there with that sort of mess a couple of girls alleged that he was a bit of a creep. There was another story of another lady who played, who kind of um, was a, was an actress alongside him during a TV show, and she made something along the lines of him kind of being a little bit too handsy and a little bit too tonguey when it came to them doing a kissing scene. Loads of different stories came out of him just being a bit of a douche. And then when you marry that up with an actual allegation from somebody saying that, oh, he was sexually harassing me or whatever it may be, it kind of just, you know, it was completely over for him. They were banging for blood. He just kind of got kicked out and no one really thought anything of it for the most part. But it seems like in the last few years, he's really made him, he's tried to make amends and he's tried to come back into the fold. His career kind of stalled and if not, you know, essentially got cancelled he had the tv series mr selfridges that was out um that kind of got cancelled straight away it was based up i think it would have got cancelled anyway but still you know um it was a show based upon the person the guy that actually founded selfridges um it was a kind of a period sort of drama piece thing then he had another movie that was no, another tv series that was meant to be out too then he had a film he had loads of things in the work that just kind of you know completely crumbled i'm pretty sure he probably lost his agent because you know hollywood is hollywood is notorious for that kind of lack of backbone shit you see a lot with um. You see, you saw a little snippet of it with uh Jeffrey Star. Sorry, with the whole let me just come here with the whole Jeffrey Star and James Charles situation. You heard James Charles say something along the lines of, "I think when he had the second breakdown video of what really happened, and he kind of earned everyone's favor." I remember he mentioning a little throwaway piece in the story, something along the lines of like, "Oh, the Dolan twins had unfollowed him, and then they called him privately and checked if he was okay." That was he's like, "What?" But then that showed you just how um. Just how fake and hollow those friendships are, right? The Dolan twins obviously felt felt like you know 
um, associating themselves with James Charles is going to be bad for their image or bad for their brand. They distanced themselves from him, and then privately they spoke to him and said, "Hey, I hope you're doing good." Which is, you know, again, it's the it's the it's the it's the black sign, and it? it's the mark of death and a kiss of death, basically. And the same thing happened to um, Ari. Um, to sorry to um, what's his face, Jeremy Piven. No one really came out and fought his corner. He kind of got left alone, really. He tried to defend himself. He did that really crazy thing where he took a polygraph test to plead his innocence, which was a real bad move. I'm pretty sure he'd uh, admit that. And in general, it just seemed like a, a bit of a, you know, locked, uh, a bit of a lock and key case, right? The woman came out, said he was sexually aggressive or he was assaulting her. Stories of him ca- came out of him being a bit of a creep. Add to the fact that no one really liked him. And then you've got this cacophony of just like, you know, cancelling and he's just he's out of here. But... He did speak about it a little bit on the Flagrant 2 podcast. I'm going to play a little bit of it now. And I'm not too sure what I think of his assum- his, like, um, his, uh, his opinion of how it went down. I'm not too sure if I believe what he's saying, but I do kind of feel some level of um, sadness. Not sadness. I do, still feel some, I do feel bad for him of how it's kind of panned out and where he's in his career now. Because I'm sure the stand-up thing, although he's trying to do it 100% and he's really going for it, I'm sure this is the only. This is kind of like the last thing he'd wanted to do, especially considering he's a you know a trained actor and he's done Broadway, he's done Shakespeare, he's he's done a, he's done his hundred thousand hours, if some. I'm sure the stand up thing was probably something he didn't envision of his future to be, but as of course to maintain a career, maintain an income, he's got to do something, right? Um. Anyway, he speaks about it a little bit. Let's play a little bit of the clip now, and then we can talk about it a little bit when we come on back on the other side. There we go. I do, and and what's crazy is that we're we're living in a time right now where. Um, and I gotta say, if you're gonna go and do an appearance on a podcast like this, I think he does look. Maybe it's a flight. He's been up for ages. And he's probably doing loads of sets. He does look really haggard, Jeremy Piven. He looks super haggard. The shirt, I'm not mad at. He's got a nice little vest underneath his jaws on, but face wise, he looks really, really haggard. Really, really, really haggard. So. I'm not too sure, you know, if this is really, really weighing on him. And again, I don't know how beneficial these interviews are going to be for him in general because I think the comedy people... Anyway, let's just watch it anyway. Let's try and interrupt. Let's watch it. ...variable for, for the media is, is clicks. And it's not about... Oops. <laughs> and, ...and checking on the validity of a source. It's like we got to be first... And there's no honor amongst thieves. They just want to get it out there. Man, I learned this from Skip Bayless. He was talking about what he talks on. Which is kind of true. I understand. I think the Me Too movement, though, was a real... I think he was unlucky in the case that he got wrapped up in that. Imagine, if it's not true, you say, oh, he's unlucky of getting wrapped up in that because there is no nuance. I think we even see what, saw with the Aziz Ansari situation that really turned out to be a really shitty date. Um, they didn't really they didn't really uh, draw any boundaries or any lines. Um, they kept going back and forth. She kept giving signs that something was going on. He t- he kept interpreting it as something different. He kept get being you know doing sexual acts. She kept receiving. There was loads of weird um, miss signals there that really didn't go to that didn't really pan out well for anybody in either party. And I think that the fact that she's not been really forthright in coming out in front of the curtain really tells you how maybe you know regretful or and yeah I don't know you probably feel bad about the whole thing maybe you don't I don't know but. I think the fact that the Jeremy Piven thing, I think what I realized, the thing that hurts him is that he had, didn't really have a good reputation beforehand, right? People always said, I think there's a quote from Adam Carolla somewhere I read where they mentioned something along the lines of whenever they ask, it's like a standard Hollywood question to ask people behind the scenes, oh, who's the biggest douchebag you've ever worked with, right? And they always say unequivocally, Jeremy Piven. They always say, like, he's a, you know, me, he's a bad dude. But I'm not sure whether or not that should justify you getting your whole career cancelled. Because I'm sure he'd argue, he'd come back and say, hey, I might be a, a douche, I might be a bit self-absorbed, I might be a bit of a diva, but how many of those people exist in the entertainment industry? And he might go even further and say, the entertainment industry um, actively looks for those kind of people, actively encourages that kind of behavior, yeah, with your handlers and your agents and your booking manager and all this sort of stuff. It actively encourages you to be a bit, you know, a bit up your own ass, to think your shit don't stink. So he shouldn't really be blamed for it when the, when the industry kind of enables him to do it. So, so I, I don't know. I don't know. He tweets stuff. He doesn't even read comments. He just mm. looks at the inside to see if it spikes. He's going with it. That's what he's yeah, going but I skip Bayless, though, and he's a piece of shit. That's Who cares about him? He doesn't yeah. care if he's right, wrong, whatever. As long as it got... That goes to show the, le- the, le- the lack of depth from Skip Bayless, really, but yeah. Have you been, you've been fucked over by that? Oh, 
hundred percent. Irreparable? As, as, I don't know. Remains to be seen. Really, remains to be seen. Now this is the Me Too shit. Correct. And as DL said to me, you took one for the team. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, It was, you got lumped in with the bad guys. Correct. And we're cleaning house. We're getting all the... Not only we clean... Well, yeah, we're cleaning house. Uh, this guy is an easy target. Um, he he is a very powerful um, this agent, is... right? That's he... why I think he missed the trick. I think he he said he was an easy target. He said he was collateral damage. He said Dio Hugite said took one for the team. I don't really think he took one for the team. I think if you're a good dude... And you don't do shitty things to women, and you generally are quite well behaved. You won't get into this nonsense. I think even the most womanizing or womanizing people out there, as long as they're respectful, you're not going to get caught up in this nonsense. I think what Me Too did was that for all the women in Hollywood who had to put up with, because you have to imagine who Jamie Piven was before this Me Too thing happened. He was huge. He was massive. He was really influential. Maybe some of these movies in here, and some, he was looking for a role, and he was trying to break out of the Ari Gold persona, blah blah blah. But he's a powerful dude in Hollywood. And if you know anything about Hollywood and you know how sucky up people are, and you know how desperate they are for fame, just look again, just just take a check, just take a little glance at the you, the Hollywood YouTube um, makeup industry. See what kind of drama happens there. Tati doesn't even live in LA and she already gets involved there. The James Charles, Jeffree Star, um, Jocelyn Hill, uh, Tana, this, that. There's so much drama. The, the, um, and everyone, everyone kind of gets involved in this crazy circus. And seeing the kind of fallout from that kind of drama gives you a little glance of just how bad it must be in Hollywood. So I think for some of the women in the whole Me Too movement, it was some of it was obviously about putting monsters into prison, right? Um, and making sure they get punished and making sure whatever they worked for gets stripped for them because they've ruined your life, right? Monsters like Harvey Weinstein who've done, you know, ungodly, um, really disgusting things to women in that industry. But I think for some women, it was a chance to really get their own back on guys who are just complete dickheads, right? Who just completely were dickheads all the time because they had some level of power. I've heard so many comedians say on podcasts that, you know, even working in shitty comedy stores of the amount of female comedians who, back in the day, who felt it was because, um, again, this was back in the day when the industry itself, this is why it's really annoying when the industry starts to be like, oh, we want to be have women involved and we had to have equal quotas. It was the industry that was telling women that it couldn't be more than two of them. It was an industry that was dissuading some women from touring together as a group because they said they have to, they were competing. They, they couldn't tour together as, as a team. It was the industry that was preventing them from headlining certain clubs because they said, you know, women can't be funny to some certain extent. So of course, there were some boneheaded guys that were furthering that narrative, but it was really the industry that was doing it. So they kind of enabled this scene where there was a powerful person who had all the jobs, who, who got all the jobs and who was on the red carpet. And then there was you, the little aspiring... Um, girl from you know outside of LA from the middle of America willing to do anything to make it and sometimes kind of crossing the line to make it now there are some occasions where as an adult you might do something that you might regret just to make it with a consenting adult who's also a good dude or a good person and you do the deed and no one else needs to know and you carry on with your life and it's something that you do that you kind of are embarrassed about but it's between you and him and you t and they'll take it to the grave but there are also some people who kind of exploit that and use it as a bit of a way to kind of get favor and pick up girls and stuff, all that sort of malarkey. So I think he was maybe throwing that line. So I think he should have been a little bit more honest and said, you know what? I was an easy target because I had done some shitty things during the time that I came Because if you would have said, look, I was, I don't know, in my late 20s and I became Ari Gold and, you know, you won't understand what that level of influence and power will do to you. It really made me think that I was better than what I was and I kind of started bugging out and I was treating women disgustingly and it caught up with me, right? Even though I didn't, I hadn't done it prior. He changed, but it, all that stuff caught up with me. That's fine. But to kind of say, you know, he was some kind of martyr and it was unwarranted. I'm not too sure because again, I've not really heard any. Again, because I listen to a lot of podcasts, right? I'm not involved in any sort of scene. I don't have any into any inside info. But the fact that you don't really see him on many other comedian, other comedians' podcasts in LA, right? Apart from this one, it's the first kind of comedians' podcast I've seen him on. It says a lot, right, about the about how he is as a character. It says a lot about how he is as a person and it says a lot about what they think of him in this industry. So I'm not too sure. It is, right? Because think about this. You, it's very easy if you've created this, you know, this, I've created this, this character. Now they had just taken down 
another powerful Hollywood guy. What's another problem for Hollywood guy? I'm just as I am a, a journeyman actor, just play one stage one. actor. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in, in extreme poverty. Um, my parents are theater actors. I grew up in. in I'm sure all the people on Twitter won't be happy when he says this, and they don't care about his own story. <laughs> stage actor. There is no white privilege. There has never been any right. white privilege. Yeah, I, I did forty movies before I did Entourage, where I'm, you know, playing blah blah blah. You know, his best friend. Yeah. We were getting scale plus ten, and I'm grinding, and I was, I wouldn't change a thing. Right. Okay, so I've earned every crumb I've ever, you know, in, in my entire life. Right. You know, I've auditioned for all those roles, and then right. unbeknownst to me, you play a big major Hollywood guy you know who is very abrasive and we all know those people they exist and they're not so fun to, it, it's fun to watch yeah. but we don't really want to be around them let's be honest I mean, that's why you put on tv it's entertaining yeah. correct yeah. you know what i'm saying anyway so, let, me, let me forward a little bit to a bit that i want to see hold on about the evidence to support it like some college essay and we heard do you think that that same thing was with you where they were like hey this to round them up and and so that, and anyway, it continues. I, I won't play the whole thing. I won't bore you guys, but you can listen to it yourself. I'll put it in the, in the show notes for you to check out. Again, a very interesting interview. I think for me, the only thing, the kind of takeaways I got from this was that um, I'm, I'm wondering what the next steps are, right? Because let's take Jeremy Piven as an example. And let's say he was some in some way culpable to the allegations. Let's say he did sexually assault some people. Or he was sexually forward. He didn't know the lines. He didn't know when when no meant no and all that kind of like. I, I don't. I don't. I don't mean like this. I think if it's a rape and all that sort of stuff, you kind of need to just like mine out and just choose another career. I don't think you should be trying to battle and kind of make your way back. Just like you know, bow out with honor. Be thankful you didn't go to prison and just go to get another career. Um, learn this in that way. I think if it was a you read the wrong signs or you were being a little bit you know a little bit sleazy and creepy i think there should be a way back in for you because you haven't demonstrated that you're a bad person just demonstrate that you're i don't know you're a dude with too much testosterone and you just want you know every hole's a goal for you in that respect and if that is the case what's the way back to redemption i personally think so far we haven't really seen anyone apologize the right way but i also don't think apologies will work i don't think there's anything anyone can say if they've been accused of us being a sexual assaulter that's ever going to take that stain away unfortunately i think nowadays in society with how things are set up and with the examples that we have in harvey weinstein in um who's the other guy what's his name guy drugged all the women but because we have two such extreme um bill cosby and harvey weinstein because we have two such extreme examples i think now anyone associated with those allegations is automatically now compared to them even though your crime wasn't the same even if it meant that you groped somebody or your hand or, or um, what you call it hovered down somebody's the arch of their back or you touched their bum or you gave them a kiss in the cheek and you got too close to the corner of their mouth whatever it may be because you get accused of that thing you're automatically going to be graded um next to harvey weinstein and bill cosby unfortunately it's really really sad but i also think in general what it's done for for the, the good part of it is that it's cleaned up shop all the douchebags, for the most part, have gone into hiding or they've kind of um, corrected their ways or whatever it may be. Pay people off in the background. So I think it's done the best. So I think now if you're a girl coming up or a dude, I think you're safe for the most part. I think you're in a... In a it, someone would be really stupid if they tried to kind of do anything to you now. It would be career suicide, essentially. Um, they wouldn't really risk it. I don't think so. The eyes are all on them now. To, um, networks don't take any chances any whiff of controversy they'll just cancel you straight away you only have to look at the whole justice smollett thing right in a court of law he got found he didn't get found not guilty but the case got thrown out even though everyone knows he probably did allegedly make up the whole um race um the whole homophobic attack but he got the case got thrown out if 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 showtime wanted to they could have easily continued just got him back on empire just continued and ignored it like nothing else happened and carried on but they didn't because they know that smudge would never leave um, Showtime and Empire. Sorry, it would continually be a question that always gets raised when they when the actors are on press junkets or when the directors are getting interviewed. It would never go away. So they'd rather just cut their losses and just completely cancel it. Even though Empire was probably a quite a profitable show and had a really good fan base. So I think, again, the only I, I don't think we've seen someone do a good apology. I don't think an apology would work. I don't think it would be welcomed. I think what needs to happen now is just the education amongst men, really, to just kind of fix up 
and make sure that we kind of police each other before these get to these kind of situations because i'm sure we have friends that we see some friends that are being a little bit too aggressive whatever it may be and you think it's entertaining because they're drunk but no i think you should be the guy to kind of pull your friend aside before it gets too far before it's the woman telling you hey you've gone too far because by that time it's another entity that you can't control and if she decides to go report it to somebody regardless of how innocent it might have been the moment it the moment it passes from her from your interaction to her interaction to somebody else's ears it's completely over for you so yeah um jeremy piven looks like he's really trying to rescue his career again i'm not sure if it's going to work or not but you know um fingers crossed it works out for him